Hello, hope you are all doing well. Today we're going to be doing a lesson on pastels. So I've already done a lesson covering oil pastels. We have four different types of pastels. We have oil pastels, and those ones are pigment with an oil base. And then we have the other types of pastels that you have soft pastels, hard pastels, um, and pastel pencils. And I'm going to be working today in hard pastels. Um, they're also commonly referred as uh, chalk pastels because they have a kind of like chalky kind of feel. They're a very, very versatile medium and they're both a drawing and a painting medium. So they can feel a lot like drawing when you're using them, but the result of your work can actually end up looking like a painting. So today we're going to be dealing with some basic techniques on how to use them. I've got, I'm using this brand uh, which is called Jaxel which are available from Great Art, um, which are very, very cheap. <laughs> and they come in very lovely, vibrant colors. I'm also using colored paper. Ideally, you want to be using colored paper or even black paper. It's really, really good for pastels. Um, it's, it's a lot better than, than white paper because it shows off the color better. And you can also work from the color of the paper as, as, as one of your, your colors, yeah? So the first thing that I do, I just want, if you have a look at the box of pastels, you can really tell the colors that I've actually used because the paper has come off. And I'll show you now the reason why, yeah? So let's see a color that is gonna show up nicely. So you can draw with a pastel. Should I move this color? Hold on so you can see better. So you can draw with a pastel by just using the edge and you can get a very, very fine line, yeah? And if you tilt it to a side, then you can cover a bigger area. And that's the reason why I take the paper out. And I'll show you now with some techniques, yeah? But if you start a drawing, you might want to use that little edge on the corner as a finer line or perhaps search if the finer line might be one of the edges okay so the first um, that I'm going to be um, showing you it's um, blending techniques and there's different ways that you can blend using pastels so one of them is called scumbling which is what I was doing just now and the beauty of scumbling is that you can actually use the color of the paper that is underneath. So you can see how we have this deep yellow color and underneath we can see the green of the paper. Yeah, And I'm going to layer this one using a blue. And what I'm going to start getting is some um, color mixing. Can you see that some greens are emerging? So let's put a lighter one in. And there you have, it's a, a lot better with this one. You can tell how those greens are emerging. And I can continue to layer on top. So you get your mixing of the colors on the surface by just layering the color yeah and you have a lovely 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 texture using this technique and see the different um, layers of different colors yeah the other one that I'm going to show you so I always use the lightest colors first this blending technique here is using your finger I'm going to try and have quite a lot of coverage. I start in the same way. I'm going to use my finger. And then I'm going to go with the other color. And I'm going to put it over here. First, because I don't want that area to be blended. I'm going to use another finger, careful, because otherwise it becomes very dirty. And then I'm going to layer on the mid bit. And you can tell how this is starting to, to blend. And then with my finger, I'm going to carefully 
blend the section in the middle. So what you get when you're blending with your finger is that as you're blending, a lot of the material starts to fade. So you'll find that you need to layer it quite a few times if you want the color to remain um, quite intense. So it's not just one go, you'll actually have to put several layers on if you want more intense color. And you might have to add on a little bit afterwards. Yeah. And if you want to lighten, you can add on some white afterwards. I'll show you a little bit on the side here as well, so you get like a nice degradation of color. So when you're using light colors on top, it acts as a blender as well, which works really, really well, as well as your fingers. Yeah. Another technique that I'm going to show you is called feathering. And feathering is done by using light little strokes. You can use loads of different colors. So I'm actually gonna do it in a few tones. I'm going to choose two blues and a couple of yellows. So I'm going to start with a dark and just short little strokes. It's a little bit like hatching. And I'm going to add quite a lot more in the darker area. And then as I'm going into my mids, I'm going to introduce lighter color. And that's going to start blending on the surface. And then I'm going to be adding, um, I know, a little bit of this yellow. So this technique is really useful um, if you want to draw in a kind of hatching way. It's also really useful if you are drawing grass, if you're drawing hair. And if you look at Renoir's pastels or ballerinas, he used this technique, feathering technique, quite a lot because it captures the um, light, the flickering of the light really well and how it reflects on surfaces, yeah? And I can reinforce my dark, let's see, with a little bit of purple at the bottom, just to create a little bit more contrast. Okay, so that's feathering. And now I'm going to show you how to do lines over soft blending. So I'm firstly going to apply my color and I'm going to softly blend it with my finger. And I'm going to contrast the softness with a bit of hard line on top. And I'm also going to use the edge of that because that edge is very straight, which is perfect for lines. And I'm going to introduce a different color. This one is not gray. Let me find another one. It's the nice pink. So they come in these really nice vibrant colors, pastels, which are great. Even the neon colors, which are amazing. So there you have a contrasting effect, yeah? And then I'm going to show you how to do pointillism. So it's quite a lot like feathering, but instead of doing short little strokes, I'm doing kind of dots. And I can get different qualities of dots just by seeing, you know, how the edge is if it's a soft edge I might get a tiny little point and if it's an edge that has been used a little bit more I might get a bigger kind of mark so you can experiment as well 
with mark making by making larger marks and by making smaller marks. So let's say I want to create the illusion of distance. Um, I can do so by making smaller marks next to the horizon if it is a landscape and bigger marks when it's in your foreground. And I'm going to start introducing different colors. So again, I'm going to be following with making big marks at the bottom and a little bit, I'm going to let them mix and some of the bits I might want to leave the pink quite pure and then I'm going to look for the hard edge. And then I'm going to bring some of this one. And do a bit of a highlight with a lighter color. Again, I'm going to look at the bit that is a little bit more worn and do some bigger marks at the bottom. Okay. So that's pointillism. So I'm just going to do a quick little recap on some points that are important to remember. So when I'm drawing, I'm using the edge to get a fine line. I can also use the side longer edge if I want to make lines. So let's say I'm doing a hatch. I can just use that edge. And I can even do a cross hatch by simply using the straightness of the pastel and just guiding it upwards. And then I can start layering with another color. If I want to create different effects and then I can lighten up with a light one. Yeah. If you're doing a cross hatch, you're always moving in one direction and then in the other and it's always parallel lines and if you want to bring a little bit of darkness uh, this one hasn't got a match here we go i can bring a darker tone Okay, um, a quick last note, when, I'm, um, when I do life drawing, I tend to use pastels quite a lot and what I find works really well is if you kind of use your, so I might have a really dark color underneath and then I might have some reds and then I might have some pinks. So I'm going to do a bit of like this scumbling technique and I'm going to put a little bit of an orange. So see that's not really looking very skin like at all. But if I then put a skin tone on top of that, hold on I just need to make sure it's clean because otherwise it becomes very messy. If I just use a kind of like pinky skin tone from doing a white person, you can just mix them and you have all those different tones coming from underneath. And then you can use a little bit of white to highlight. And that's a good way to create a little bit of skin tone. And then you can blend a bit with your finger. I tend to avoid um, blending with my fingers too much because um, you don't you don't have as much control when you blend with your fingers. Uh, it's good for some effects, like by all means do it. But when you're blend, blending with your fingers, always be very, very aware that you have a different color in your fingers. So you might want to have a cloth by your side 
um, and just keep on keeping them keeping your your fingertips clean yeah um, it's also important remember when you're blending reinforce the lights reinforce the darks because at the end because you will lose so much throughout the process of blending so you always have to come back to it so as you can tell this has a very very chalky kind of um feel to it texture to it so to fix chalk pastels what you can use you can use fixatives fixatives are quite expensive and um, they normally cost about i don't know about 15 pounds for a can um, what I normally use is very, very cheap hairspray. Now, the cheapest hairspray you use, the better, because more expensive hairsprays, they have like conditioning oils and all of this stuff that is good to protect your hair. And you don't want those oils in your paper, or in your pastel. You want like really cheap chemical stuff. So I normally use like a supermarkets value brands that cost like 50p a can. Those ones tend to be the best. When you are fixing, you need to do it at about 20 centimeters away from your drawing. And you're not gonna do one layer, you're gonna do like an even layer. You're gonna leave that to dry, and then you're gonna do more. As you start applying fixatives, you will realize that the lightest um, colors in your drawing are going to start disappearing a little bit. It kind of like, um, so what you need to do is that you fix, you apply a little bit more of the highlights if needed and then you fix again and you might have to reapply the highlights and then fix again but if you don't fix your drawing at all it will with time completely vanish so it's very important that you do fix your uh, pastel um, drawings and paintings so that's it from me for today and on the next class we're going to be working through a drawing of certain subjects i haven't really thought about what we're going to do yet possibly flowers or something really nice and easy to do and i hope you have a lovely week ahead and i see you soon bye bye